Gamers, get around. We'll show you the HP Victus 15 or just a quick recap of our comprehensive review on our site. Click the link fast like it's a unique iTunes draft from a bus, and you'll get the left surprise, some sweet comparisons, and all the juicy details. But if you're in the middle of a game and can't take a break, no problem, stay with us right here, just for a few minutes. The Victus 15 is an affordable and compact gaming machine that weighs 2.29 kg while being 23.5 mm thick. The build quality is a little sacrifice but the design is a top-notch mix of office and gaming characteristics. The laptop is entirely built of plastic, which causes some flex from the lid and base. The bigger crime is the bouncing lid, which also doesn't open with one hand. Once opened, we see a pretty big grill, which is used for ventilation, as the speakers are on the bottom. Below it, there's a great keyboard with a numpad for the number crunchers among you, long key travel, and clicky feedback. The arrow keys are a bit smaller than we'd want, but the rest is great. The touchpad can be a tad more responsive, however, the surface is smooth and the tracking is precise. Moving to the sides, we're surprised to see an SD card reader on the left, along with the power plug, one full-sized USB 3.2 generation 1 port, and an audio jack. On the other side, there's an HDMI 2.1 port, one more full-sized USB port, a LAN port, and a USB Type-C 3.2 generation 1 port with power delivery and DisplayPort capabilities. The base configuration that we tested comes with a full HD TN panel, but there are IPS options as well, which we heavily recommend. For the designers among you, there's a version with 100% sRGB coverage as well. The TN panel just doesn't cut it in 2023, having poor viewing angles, a max brightness of 267 nits, and a very low contrast ratio of 400 to 1, so the blacks aren't really black. It shows 52% sRGB coverage, while the accuracy improves significantly with our design and gaming profile, going from a delta E value of 11, down to 3.3. On the other hand, the panel has a relatively fast response time of just 11.8 milliseconds and shows zero PWM usage across all brightness levels. We'll have our display profiles linked in the description below, and in the upper right corner. The speakers are a high point of the laptop, offering clear audio that's clear of deviations across all frequencies. Our laptop runs a Ryzen 5600H, which goes pretty easy on the 52.5 Watt hours battery, making it last for 11 hours and 24 minutes of web browsing, or 8 hours and 50 minutes of video playback. Only 2 per 100 people watching this video are subscribers. If you decide to just start following us, we'll be able to reinvest more in our laboratory thus making even more helpful videos for you. Thank you, you're awesome. The Ryzen 5 5600H offers similar performance to the Ryzen 5 6600H from last year, but pretty much all 12th generation Alder Lake H series SKUs from Intel would put it in the bin. With that said, the 5600H is still a viable option, having the power to do video rendering, streaming, and other heavier work. Moving to the GPU, we have the GTX 1650, a pretty outdated card that was released in 2019. The 3050 and 3050 Ti cards that are available offer around 50% to 100% more performance in benchmarks, so if you can squeeze the cash for it, you definitely should. In our gaming tests, we want to highlight Days Gone, a game with beautiful visuals that the GTX 1650 runs with no problem. We got 63 frames per second at high settings, which is good. The gaming footage is right out of our Laptop Media Benchmarks channel, which has tested almost every popular laptop GPU in many games, so you can get an accurate performance assessment before committing to a device. Looking at the cooling setup, you wouldn't guess that it's for a gaming laptop, as it's got just two heat pipes and two fans that sit next to each other. 
However, the Ryzen 5 doesn't need much, managing to maintain 3.66 GHz after 15 minutes of testing. It does reach 91 degrees Celsius, but that's within the CPU's operating temperature, so it's fine. The GTX 1650 also isn't very demanding, maxing out its 50 watts TGP, while running at just 65 degrees Celsius. At the same time, it reaches the highest clock speeds that we've seen from a 1650 card. The Victus 15 surprises us with its comfort. The fans aren't audible most of the time, while the base has a hotspot of just 35 degrees Celsius. Once inside, we have to show you what you're working with. The Victus offers two SODM slots for up to 32GB of DDR4 memory, as well as one M.2 PCIe slot for Generation 3 SSDs. We'll leave our disassembly video in the description, in case you already have the Victus 15 and want to know how to upgrade it. The Victus 15 from HP turns out to be a real charmer of a gaming laptop, complementing its low price with good hardware that performs well. It's surprisingly quiet for a gaming rig, which is another bonus. Just skip out on the TN panel and we think you'd be quite pleased with it. For more information about the Victus 15, swing by our website and check out our in-depth review of the laptop, with more tests and benchmarks.